Hello, I'm Norman Burton from Burton Electrotechnical, and I have one of our motor control trainer units set up. This is the MCT 24V three phase unit. This particular unit is designed to mount on a wall. Uh, you'll notice that the motor is mounted above the control section in this case. Typically, we supply these units on a rolling frame and the motor is mounted down in front of the starters. Uh, mounting the motor up above the uh, control section uh, provides some extra space when, when, uh, when you really need it in the, uh, in the institutional environment. Um, so I just wanted to go over uh, some of the main features of this unit. One of the most important aspects of this of the uh, the training system is is that it has two independent sections. We have a control section and we have a power section and they are powered independently of each other. The control section uses a either a 24 volt AC or a 24 volt DC class 2 power supply which limits the energy and allows uh, students to configure circuitry and test their circuitry in a controlled and safe manner. So we can carry out pilot control projects, basic wiring, some timer and control relay circuits, push button arrangements and so on. And then we progress into motor control and we, that's where we, t where we power up the second section. So the second section is independently powered with a three phase line supply. So we have a three phase supply. We have a, a non-reversing and a reversing starter enclosure and all of the pilot devices are all, uh, uh, are all brought out to wiring jacks and we can configure them safely on the low voltage. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time uh, explaining the two sections and uh, some of the uh, ins and outs of using the system. The low voltage control section consists of an upper device plate which lines up with the non-reversing motor starter enclosure and a lower device plate which lines up with the reversing motor starter enclosure. And basically the devices are, are, are such that we have our, our non-reversing devices typically on the top, our reversing on the bottom. For example, our float switches are on the top plate because typically we don't reverse a pump, we only control it in one direction. So um, the power supply for the unit is fed through a power connector on the right hand side of the upper device plate and it is fed with a class 2 power supply. It's cord connected, 120 volt cord connected. So that's fairly straightforward, good safe unit. There's a switch at the power supply in the workbook, the workbook stresses that the student must turn off this switch when they're configuring their projects. This uh, avoids uh, damaging the fuse that is located right beside the power connector. All right, so it's a 0.75 amp fast acting fuse. Um, it, it, will, it will trip out fairly quickly. If you've got a short circuit, it's gonna go real fast, okay? Now, um, on our older units, we didn't have this switch. We didn't have this disconnect switch on the, on the low voltage power supply. So what I suggest you do in that case, because you would be plugging and unplugging the, uh, the low voltage uh, connection quite frequently, because there's a, quite a few projects once you get rolling, is I take a wire from the power supply, connect it to this selector switch. I'll just zoom in a little bit. There's a selector switch. So just run a wire over to it and that can be your disconnect switch that you turn off when you are configuring your circuits. That'll avoid damaging the, the, the fuse. So having a look at the line voltage section, we have three phase power coming into a horsepower rated disconnect switch. We do have a neutral, we brought a neutral into the upper enclosure, it's tied onto a terminal block and it works with the three indicator lights. The, the neutral is great for future expansion, okay? The, the lockable disconnect switch is a very uh, integral part of the, the training system. In the workbooks, it's stressed that they lock out that disconnect switch when they are configuring the low voltage projects. 
while using the non-reversing and reversing enclosures. The reason for this is they need to open the enclosure and test uh, stopping of the two wire and three wire control circuits and they need to test the overload circuitry. I will show you this, okay? Now, uh, we have three indicator lights that indicate three phase power when the switch is on. If any one of those indicator lights is out, we know we have a fusing issue. When you're working with non-reversing and reversing projects, you have to switch between the two enclosures, okay? You have to disconnect the motor from the non-reversing and connect it to the reversing and vice versa depending on which projects you're working on. So right now I have a project wired up for non-reversing so I'm going to uh, connect that. So I have the motor connected to the non-reversing. So that, that's something that they forget once in a while. <laughs> they hit the start button and nothing happens. Okay, so um, I go, I'll, I'll power up the low voltage section. I have a basic three wire control circuit wired up stop start uh, uh, circuit and I'll just quickly go over the uh, the leads and jacks the leads are all finger safe okay now what happens with these sometimes they drop them on the floor and they stand in, on them and they break them so if you see any of these on the floor please pick them up do not do not uh, do, don't leave them on the floor they get damaged and it's not safe for somebody else that has to use them we have uh, finger safe jacks on each of the enclosures and each device, each normally open contact and normally closed auxiliary contact uh, from, the starter, uh, from the starter is brought out and to the surface where we can safely configure the projects. The overload normally closed and normally open contact is also brought out and the connection for the coil are uh, brought out the low voltage in this case 24 volt DC connection is, um, is is mounted on the panel where we can safely connect and disconnect the, uh, for different configurations we have three pilot lights also with the same jack arrangement so what, I, what I'll do is uh, I will test the overloads and I'll test start stopping of the circuit and I'll show you how that's done so I'm locked out I'm going to open the enclosure I'll open the enclosure I'll set it to run mode so you can hear that coil pulling in and there's a stop button I'll zoom in so if I hit that stop button you see the the coil drop out so I'll do that again I'll hit the start and then the stop button so I can test stopping and it will stop a two wire also a two wire type control circuit now what I want to do is test the overloads and make sure that they drop out so what I'll do is I'll open up this little window so we open up this window and there's a test slide and an arrow and you, the, the arrow indicates to the left so what you do is you energize the coil and then you just slide that to the left and we have a fault indicated and the stop light is on I cannot energize the green light or the coil or we're, we're, we're tripped it, it's not set to automatically re, um, reset in this case so now I can close this little window I still have a trip and I just hit the reset and I'm clear alright so I'll close it close it up and now they can uh, they can run the motor so now we can unlock it if they want to do some current measurements or whatever that's they'll need their PPE for that so I'll start that up and run the motor so start stop start stop and we can hear that contactor pulling in and that motors running that's great so that's the sort of the ins and outs of uh, working with the line voltage section it's very important that they keep that disconnect switch locked out because they will be in and out of these enclosures um, to, to test those different uh, circuit arrangements we do a lot of two wire and three wire control and um, you will uh, you will need to also test your overloads now the other way that you can test overloads you need a little bit of patience for this is you you adjust the overload setting dial as 
far left as possible. So counterclockwise, you set it down to basically so that it's off, and then you tell it to run. So you, 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 you initiate the run, you start the motor, and you let it run a little while. And because the motor's not loaded, it'll take a little while to heat up the overloads. Once they heat up, it will trip out on its own. And if, you're, if, you op if you lock it out and open up the enclosure right away and try to reset it, you won't be able to reset it right away because it, the overload is still hot from the trip and it'll have to cool off and then you'll be able to reset it. Okay, so that's the line voltage side. I'll cover some, uh, some more of the ins and outs working with the trainer in some future videos. Well, hopefully we'll see you then.